Hi there. Let's take a look for a few minutes at how you can use a topic such as exchange rates to build really good analysis and evaluation uh, using both micro and macroeconomics. Example is now very keen that you show your synoptic understanding of the subject, see the bigger picture. And this is a question which uh, we've decided to look at. Uh, consider the micro and macroeconomic impact of a 20% depreciation in the value of sterling, the exchange rate. Here's the sterling exchange rate index weighted according to trade with different countries. And you can see uh, twice in the last uh, 10 years or so, there's been quite a significant depreciation or fall in the external value of the currency, 2008, 2009, big fall. And again, in 2015, and particularly in the days and weeks following Britain's decision to exit the European Union in June 2016, a big depreciation of sterling. When we think about micro and macro effects, so we, we quite like it to do two mnemonics. One is for micro, we call it popsicle. So you can pick and choose from all kinds of things, but perhaps focus on price, output, profits, uh, structure of market, degree of inefficiency, nature of competition, the effects on the labor market, the effects on externalities. You can choose whatever the topic is, choose some microeconomic effects, popsicle may help you. And on the macro side, we have a, a mnemonic called digestive. Uh, this can be quite hard to swallow at times, but you might want to take, for example, the impact on development, inflation, growth, jobs, structure of the economy, trade is important, inequality, and of course, the state of the government's fiscal balances. Now, we're going to draw on some of these in our answer to this question. Evaluate the macro and micro effects of a 20% depreciation of sterling. Well, we're going to start with the microeconomic effects first of all, and then the macro. So in each case, we build a point, we make a point, make it clearly, build some contextualized analysis and then evaluate the point. So point one, a weaker currency, a fall in the pound, increases the price of imported products, such as component parts, maybe component parts used in the car industry or in, or in making air aircraft. This will lead to higher variable costs, good micro concept for UK producers, which will lead to lower supernormal profits and investment spending. You could actually bring in an analysis diagram at this point, perhaps showing an increase in variable cost on the profit maximizing price and output. But once we've built the analysis, we need to evaluate. However, some producers such as airlines use the forward currency market to hedge against currency volatility. So they won't necessarily be affected directly or immediately by a fall in the value of sterling. They may well have decided to buy their fuel at a particular price in the future. Fall in sterling, a second point of fall in sterling will cause consumers to switch their spending to cheaper UK products. That's a micro effect in markets. This is because imports such as food and drinks are now relatively more expensive, causing a substitution effect. So at the micro level, sales and profits for domestic producers, perhaps uh, domestic food producers, for example, or beer makers, might increase, show an outward shift of revenue curves, you could show it a change in profits. However, valuation point, strong brand loyalty may make demand for imports price inelastic, thus limiting, lowering the scale of any expenditure switching. There's no guarantee that people will necessarily switch away from imported goods and services, which they may prefer towards domestically produced goods and services. Third point, 20% depreciation of sterling will give an incentive for UK exporters to expand supply. In other words, they have the potential to increase their sales in overseas markets. Increased investment may help UK firms to exploit internal economies of scale, which will lead to lower long-run unit costs. So here's a chance for exporters maybe to ramp up their investment spending in new capacity to meet an expected increase in export sales and if the investment takes place, that could help allow British exporters to become bigger scale of production, comms of scale, which would reduce their unit costs. However, uh, this depends on whether firms lower their export prices in overseas markets. So instead of increasing sales, which might necessitate increased investment, instead they may keep the output more or less the same, uh, but instead take a higher profit margin. So they may not cut their prices in overseas markets. Instead, they may choose to take a higher profit margin. So you wouldn't necessarily get the economies of scale of production. 
And then we can look at some macro effects. Here we're looking at the wider, the bigger picture on the macro economy. 20% fall in sterling will bring about faster economic growth. So it could help sustain an economic recovery or take an economy to a higher level of GDP or GDP per head. Uh, the analysis, a lower currency will stimulate exports, X, and potentially weaken import demand, M, therefore leading to a rise in net exports, X minus M, and therefore an increase in aggregate demand. Again, you could use an ADAS diagram to support your analysis. However, evaluation point, higher prices for imports will hit household real incomes. So a lot of people who rely on imported products, their energy bills may be higher, their, their weekly shop in the supermarkets is more expensive, so their real income goes down, and therefore that could cause a fall in consumption, which of course will be a negative for aggregate demand and a negative for growth. Second point, depreciation of sterling will help maybe may help to lower the UK's trade gap, big deficit uh, between imports and exports in goods and services. Export demand will strengthen and import demands, import volumes will decline as a fall in the pound causes expenditure switching effects. So you're hoping that the export sector would grow and that uh, domestic producers would take up more of, more of the demand for imports. However, another evaluation point, this depends on the price elasticity demand for exports and the price elasticity demand for imports. In the short run, of course, a fall in the pound could lead to a J-curve effect, which actually causes a widening or an increased trade gap. And you could develop this by talking about the Marshall learner condition, the conditions required for depreciation to improve the trade balance. Third point, a big drop in sterling, a 20% is quite a significant depreciation, will lead to an increase in inflation. Um, Analysis, a weaker pound causes cost push inflation because of the rising sterling price of raw materials, component parts and things like energy. Oil and gas becomes more expensive. And again, you could use an analysis diagram here showing an inward shift of short run aggregate supply and the effect on inflation. However, the impact on inflation may be cut if global prices are falling and if producers can absorb the higher costs. Although the pound will cause import prices to rise, it may be the case that actually globally those prices are falling anyway, which will mitigate the effects. And it's up to the producers, of course, to decide whether they pass on these higher costs to their consumers in a form of a, of a higher price. They may choose not to. So what we're doing is we're building points on the micro side, on the macro side, and evaluating as we go. Crucially, I think if you come to some final reason comments, uh, you probably have to come to a view as to whether you think a, a fall in the pound is good or bad news for the, for the economy at this stage in time. So some wider evaluation points about a currency depreciation. It's obviously going to take time for both consumers and businesses to respond in different markets and industries. That's, that's a key point. Uh, you could make a comment about the scale of the change. A 20% exchange rate change is a, is a significant movement likely to have a bigger effect cumulatively than let's say a five percent change however is this fall in the pound likely to be a temporary relatively temporary phenomenon or is it likely to be a longer term effect are we going to have to learn to live with a weaker pound over the next three to five years for example we've already mentioned the importance of elasticity but you might want to develop the analysis by talking about second round effects so for example the possible multiplier and accelerator effects if there's a surge in exports uh, and also, crucially, the effects depend on when the currency change takes place. So 20% depreciation at the end of a recession would have a different effect from a 20% depreciation uh, in the middle of or in the later stages of economic recovery, as indeed happened in 20, 2016. Uh, what type of economy are we talking about? Well, in this case, of course, the UK, but a, a small developing country versus a large advanced nation might have a significantly different effect. And a wider point is that the impact of a depreciation depends on the openness of the economy. In other words, what percentage of a nation's GDP, what percentage of employment depends on the traded sector in the economy, the tradable goods and services that are either exported or that come in as imports to, to meet demand. So all kinds of different evaluation points you could build into your wider answer, perhaps in part of the final, uh, perhaps as part of the final reason comment. 
Okay, so there's a quick look at micro and macro analysis on evaluation of exchange rates. Uh, keep in mind, you'd be looking to add in some analysis diagrams to support your points. Thank you.